Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we're going to talk to Shaylin Marks about her new chapbook, Pheromones. Okay, there it is, in all its glory. Look at that. It's a beautiful book. It really, really is. So we're going to be chatting and we kind of go all over the place and then we start getting really like philosophical and then we start talking about, and again, it's because like, I'm like, I'm like, Shaylin, fix me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, here, I'm going through all of these things. Tell me what the right answer is and all this shit. We get pretty deep and like we talk about her book and then we start talking about the stages of grief. And then shit just gets kind of fucking weird. I haven't edited the episode yet, so I have no idea how long this is going to be. But I know we talked some shit. We said some things that probably neither one of us wants out in the public sphere. So um, a lot of what we talked about and joked about is going to be cut out of the fucking episode. So... (laughs) This could be a 10 minute episode for all I know. I have no fucking idea. But it was a really good talk. We had a good time. Pheromones is a great book. You can get it again at shaylinmarks.com. On with the damn show. Hello, everybody. And welcome to this episode. So, like, like we fucked this whole thing up today so i apologize to you like we are way later than we were supposed to be i have already had i'm on my fifth beer so i'm beerless yeah but you know you've been drinking a lot all week you need to calm the fuck down you need a good night's sleep you know drinking yeah. something but can i release that information on the podcast oh my god are you talking about you fucking pervert oh my god you're welcome now that you've embarrassed me, um, I will embarrass you by telling you I am not wearing pants. Um, other than that, let's get into I'm wearing two layers of pants. <laughs> Good job. My legs got cold. So I have leggings and like giant sweatpants. Nice. Um, yeah. So I'm like wearing a pair for the both of us, you know? Yeah. Well, I woke up late to a other podcast interview. And so the motherfucker's lucky I have a shirt on. But other than that, <laughs> so Shaylin Marks. Poet extraordinaire, you have, you're like, oh my God, this guy. You have (laughs) um, released a chapbook called Pheromones. So perhaps, perhaps, perhaps you have. If you want edgy, motherfucker, like you got, you'll be edging. Oh, oh shit. (laughs) Oh my God, this chick. Okay. So the question that I have, like all of this shit will start coming more organically as we go, but we're both kind of tired and ridiculous right now. So why don't you start by talking about what the book is about? Okay. So long story short, it was um, a relationship I had with a woman um, that we had many ups and downs with like I we were we dated like it's very much the Ross and the Rachel like shit or get off the pot dated twice was friends had like eight falling outs um so it's pretty much just like a decade long situation I had with another woman now when me and you first started talking you were working on two books you were working on this one and another one which we'll talk about at a later date mm-hmm. how did you know already that you wanted this separate and that you wanted this to come out first um so like originally this all kind of it kind of just literally vomited um in the moment because we were doing a uh, poetry workshop with anarchy crew it was the do a chat book at night thing and i just started one poem that was like about her and then um i was like fuck let's just turn this into a fucking thing Um, Because I have plenty of stories and, like, plenty of shit to, like, get off my chest from it. And I was like, you know what? This is really just its own, like, separate entity from, like, everything else. But it's still during the same time period as the other, like, concept, which is going to be, like, a full-length book and not, like, a chat book. But, yeah. So what made you decide to put it out yourself? Um, Well, I was just, I kind of just, I guess that's a good question. I just felt like... 
book. I don't know. I never, I just wanted to do it. I right. wish I had like more depth to that answer. I just wanted to put it out there. I don't know. It's it's like therapy for me. And like, there's some interesting fucked up shit that I feel like people could like maybe like relate to. Um, and you don't really see, well, maybe you do. I mean, there's like Mary Oliver, obviously. It's like a very like infamous lesbian poet, but like, um, I don't know. Because we just need more of it, I guess. How do you, how do you feel um, the process has been putting it out yourself? Um, it was definitely a lot of trial and error. Um, the formatting was fun. I think it's just as far as like, putting the shit together, like printing it and everything um, was probably Mm. a new experience just because of like, I used four different like colors of paper. And so like, as you go closer to the chapbook, sorry, like the lighting isn't the greatest, but like it starts out way lighter. And then once you get to the center, it's like darker, you know, a vagina, right? Uh, So like making sure like all the pages were like in the right order to print out like properly was probably like kind of like a pain in the ass but um and just getting it like dark enough on like the actual like shimmer like hard stock was a little tricky but once i like figured it out like i mean this 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 book is fucking gorgeous like (laughs) just like looking at it as a thing it's a beautiful beautiful chat book would you put that much into another chat book if you were going to make another one? Or would you like go, you know what, this was really fun to do, but I don't think I need to fucking do that much. I don't know. Like it was fun. I I don't know about like the inner pages necessarily, just because like it was just too good not to do. Yeah. Um, that I just kind of thought up of on like a whim. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's out of the question if like something inspires me to do something crazy, like I might, yeah. But, like, the whole idea was to make the book look like a pussy, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, there you go. So, something would have to inspire you to put that much thought into the actual construction of the book. Yeah. Okay. So, you had a launch, which was awesome. How did that go? Tell us about that. What did you do? Who did you talk to? How did you make it happen? In my little small town of Hagerstown, Maryland, it's, like, essentially, if you look at the map, whoever's listening or watching this it's like wherever maryland gets like the skinniest uh that's the county i live in and the main um city is hagerstown and downtown um there's this brewery um or sorry distillery it's called meinl schmidt distillery it's it's right downtown and um i went there for like the first time to like grab a drink or whatever and i looked over and they had like a hemingway quote on like the back wall and i was like oh shit because i knew i wanted to do a release party since it's my first like full like stand on the chap book um, and I was like, this is the place, this is a sign. And I just ended up calling up um, the place and the owner got back to me right away. And she was like, fucking down, like all for it. And what's really cool is that her um, her stepson um, actually goes to the um, Barbara Ingram um, School of the Arts. It's like a artsy, like high school. And um, her son is actually the ambassador of the creative writing program. So um he did um some readings as well as um another student that's like in the program and then of course we had the great mfa um jhu alumni chris chowders coming out thanks to good old bucks if you're listening to this i love you papa bucks (laughs) do you think that doing an event like that is something that everyone should do if they're putting out their book yes no, would you do it again? Absolutely. And I think, it, and like to go with what you were saying, um, I think it's important that like everybody does that, like for sure. Cause um, what was really cool, it was honestly just a magical experience just because like um, these kids are just so fucking brilliant. And it's just like, I'm just glad that like poetry, like poetry is still like alive. We just have to like look under the rocks to like find the salamanders with their pins, you know? It was just cool seeing a lot of different types of people because. Um, the kids from the school were like prosy. Obviously, Chris Childers, he's like fucking astonishing and does like Greek translations and shit. Like he has a book that's coming out of the trans like a shit ton of translations with Penguin Random House, and that's gonna like release only in the UK, like in a year. Like we'll be able to have access to it. So like he's phenomenal, totally different style. And then you have like me. <laughs> whatever you want to call that it was really cool just having all these people together and I, I think if if we keep trying to do that and like uplift each other um 
it'll make the community stronger and it'll like bring back more relevance to poetry because it's very much there. It's just, we need to get out of our houses, you know? That's awesome. So yeah. how has the book been selling? How many like did you make and like what has it been doing? Yeah, so um, I did a run of 30 limited copies and I have 10 left. I just did, I have an order I have to put in actually tomorrow. A few more people um, bought a copy and then I know I have a couple friends that I'm going to see next week that want a copy too. So it should dwindle down like really good here. So I'm really excited because it's only so been out for like a couple weeks. What are you going to do after that? Are you going to make more copies? Are you going to make different version copies? Or are you just like, that's it and tough shit? Like what's happening? Yeah, I think that's it. Tough shit. I mean, I might go the Matt Wall route and eventually like make an ebook or something um, mm -hmm. of it. But yeah, I think this is, this is it. Get on while they're hot folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so where can people get them shaylinmarks.com it's not shaylin marks it's shaylinmarks.com or is it shaylinmarks.com shaylinmarks.com so i don't know how you want to say it i say it both ways i don't know identity crisis and i'm 31 turn 32 oh. in like two weeks three weeks whatever you don't look a day over 24 oh girls look at sealer that's all that is <laughs> a little bit of highlight but you know the video camera is not that good to like pick that up so oh so it's really soft is what you're saying so so in person like <laughs> i need botox like tomorrow is that what you're saying oh i'm not that rough dude <laughs> but i'm telling you i i do this terrible concentration face like see it it'll eventually there are in, no and i will be there oh my god yeah. No, See? you're full of shit. It's right no. there. No, you're doing you <laughs> You're fine. This chick freaking She's out. She's coming. Oh, no, 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 no. He needs to work much harder on that to make that happen. Now that this is like ran it, I mean, not that it's France, of course, but now that this is out and it's in the ether, um, now I'm trying to play more around with obviously going back to like my full length book uh, project, which is Projectile Vomit. Um, I know we've talked about that a little bit, but like, so I'm still writing that. I'm like over halfway through it. So that'd be cool. Hopefully get the manuscript together. I'm hoping I'll have everything like edited by like summer and then ideally putting it out around Christmas. I don't know. It just depends on the budget and stuff. Um, we'll see. And but you, other than that, yeah. Are you going to print the books out yourself or are you going to do print on demand? What are you thinking? I, I guess I haven't like thought that far yet because I'm just like, you're still writing even, like, yeah yeah i don't know i mean i yeah i really don't know i mean at the end of the day like if it can't like work logistically like i'll just do print on demand but we'll see i'm just gonna shop around i don't know um about the book like how did you decide what order the poems were gonna go in um, this actually, like the order that it's in was just literally the order that I wrote it in. The only thing that has any like specific like order is just the very last one, which is unsent letter. Cause, um, I just felt like it was just a good way to wrap up the book, but everything else just kind of came out organically through the whole, like make a chat book and a night thing. Cause like when I wrote the first poem, I took out some words and I just chain linked each one and I just kind of kept it that way. I mean, like a part of me thought that maybe I should reformat it. So where like the very middle of the uh, of the book is like maybe the most like sexual poem or whatever, since it's like the pinkest part. But um, I just decided to just leave it the way that it was because I kind of liked what was in the middle. Um, the poem's blue light girl, um, just about like a fucked up situation. Uh, I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but. How did you choose the fonts? I'm really stupid and I'm not like a big like font extraordinaire. Uh, so like I did like research um, the exact chemical structure of the type of pheromone that releases when typically women are attracted to the other women. And it just so happens this is called like Estra blah, 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 blah. I forget. Mm -hmm. I have it written down. I got references. Anyway, um, this is actually a hormone that releases um, from like pregnant women, which I thought was interesting. Um, 
But as far as like the fonts go, I was like, well, I want something that feels sciencey, and I don't know why, but I feel like that Corey or new just looks sciencey to me. So well, I did that, and then I just put, um, I believe it's Helvetica in the pages, just because it just felt nice to read. Like I love New Times Roman because I use it all the time in school, but I was like, eh, I don't know. I'll just use that because it's just easy on the eyes. I'm assuming um, unsent letter is like kind of like your go-to when you're thinking about reading stuff out of this is that accurate or no whenever i honestly whenever i did the reading i i went for all the ones that had something to do with that ceramic pot so like um i ended up doing photosynthesis and um sun poison and patience and i kind of just popped around when i did my set but i ended it with unsent letter just because I felt that it was like a good way to like end the set so to say just because of like the closure it entails I really I, I like birthday shield I like um well Nostradamus is bullshit I like too but <laughs> um yeah shit I shouldn't romanticize yeah do that one this book is so nice thank you shit I shouldn't romanticize it's Kelly's birthday. Everyone loves Kelly, myself included. This isn't about Kelly, but this is about the 22-year-old woman with the perfect long blonde hair drifting against her waist. Hard to choose between her hips or her smile. Fuck, let's be real. I love it all. The solace in her laugh. I pile a mountain of dollar store balloons on top of her while she lays on the couch. She's fucked up again. I'm sober for once. She throws them back in my face. But what really smothers is the guilt of her high. Did I lead her to this? It's funny because it's more of a looking back longingly poem. But the poem is called Something You Shouldn't Romanticize. So is is how these poems go together. When do you think the turn is from where you are not romanticizing anymore? Like in the or book you, or in general? In the book, or do you think the whole book <clears throat> romantic or a romanticized vision of something that you knew shouldn't be happening? Yeah, because like so almost all of these poems, except for maybe a few of them in here, all happened while I was still um actively on heroin during those times, because that's when we were like at our heaviest moments of like dating, yeah. um, was through my addiction. Uh, both times and both times we dated I was fucked up like in the moment I thought that there was like I was just like hooked on like the drugs and hooked on the muse and like I was just hooked on the idea of just like um having this like beautiful toxic woman to fucking like write about and then when I look back I'm like Jesus fuck like I was such a douchebag but like also she was fucking nuts Granted, I would always say she was nuts, like, back in the day when we were, like, together or whatever. But, like, I never took accountability for stuff. Yeah. Um, Because of the way she would react to my shittiness. I just used her shitty reaction as, like, my out with the way that she um, did, like, a lot of, like, self-harm and stuff like that. Because she has borderline personality disorder, so. As someone who has an encyclopedia's worth of poems about an ex how do you feel like how much time do you feel like needs to go by before you can write about something like this have it be healing and have it be okay as opposed to like i don't want to say forcing one through it but like um because i've been really contemplating putting out that book and I just cannot read it right now. I cannot go through those poems. So how was that to do that? Yeah, no, yeah. I. Uh, that's a really good question. Like, I think for me, for this particular situation, um, we haven't dated since 2016. So it's been ample time since we've been together romantically, but we were friends all those years leading up and like our falling out was 2020. Um, like in like December 2020 and so I feel like I had plenty of time to 
get past all that stuff because like since we hadn't dated in many years i had ample time to heal and like reflect on everything because like we stopped dating in 2016 um there was a lot of lingering like emotions and stuff but like we stayed as friends like and i was very adamant on staying friends and um we stopped being friends in 2020 in like december and so i didn't start writing these till 2023 around this time so literally around this time a year ago um was when we were doing all this so like it, i feel like i've had more than enough time to heal and i've also like at this point i've just like i guess at that point i had just hit like six years i think of like sober from like heroin or whatever so like i've got a much clearer healthier mind than ever and i'm obviously more mature so i think it was a little easier for me to like go through these I maybe mean, some of it was like a little tough but um i don't know i think i just had ample time to like talk about this i guess yeah. i just want to i don't know and I just didn't want to write about it ever again, I guess. Because, like, it, I've oh. definitely been, like, over her in a, like, romantic sense. But, like, for a very long time, I've struggled finding, like, what a new, like, what a new muse would be for me. And I finally have that now. So I was, like, awesome. Because I had, it's it's kind of weird. Because, like, I had just finished writing all this. And then that person popped into my life, like, a fucking, like, week later. Which is, like, weird. But worked out it's fucking crazy so did you write that book last march something like that because like I, think, I feel like it was in january i feel like this was written at the same session that that was written at yeah i don't know that's fucking crazy yeah um do you think you could have written that book in 2016 Yes and no, mainly because, well, there's other like events in there that like obviously are in there that like you wouldn't have known about if I wrote it back then. But um, I don't think I would have taken accountability as hard. And I feel like a lot of it, I probably would have been, because back then when I was like, especially when I was using, especially when it comes to like writing about like, you know, a woman I'm like, obsessed with like even when we broke up and I was like she's crazy like I still have feelings for her so I feel like I would have just pulled some fucking like Casanova fucking Shay shit and still try to like make it like real smooth and like not like taken like into accountability like the shit I was doing especially because I was still using then yeah so did you find this healthy yeah it was it was just because it's been so long like I was a little like, oh man, hopefully she she doesn't use social media, thank God. So I'm like, fuck, like if she finds out, like hopefully she won't scream me. I won't put her name in here. Can a person write the same poem about a subject no matter what year it is and how far removed they are from it? Or does time constantly change how a poem will show up? It depends. I mean, I think it depends on a lot of things because, like, despite, like, the subjectiveness of skill, I think it's also um, our perception. Um, so, like, maybe our memory of, like, said story might be warped compared to, like, what it was in that moment and the feelings you had in that moment. Obviously, they have changed. So, like, technically, it's not going to be written the same. But some of it, like, I remember exactly how I felt like um if i can find it uh dance lesson learned that poem i didn't write um i i wrote that like genuinely from my memory of how i felt that exact day yeah and i could still like remember it and like her just like you know getting mad that i like spun her around in front of a bunch of people at this like thing and like her slapping me in the face over it because I'm like, is that an overreaction? Yes, but like that aggressiveness, um, even though I was kind of like the more dominant person in the relationship, um, something about her just like slapped me over it. I was just like really into it. I don't know. It just made me like her even more. And just, I was just in a daze as she just like walked away from me pissed off. I'm like, damn, you know, I love that bitch, <laughs> honestly. 
Um, and I remember having that feeling. So I was able to like genuinely write that. Um, like obviously like my writing style has changed since then. So sure, technically it wouldn't be the same, but as far as like the feeling and the soul in it, that was definitely the same. But towards like the second half, um, a lot of it knew. Yeah, now that I'm just like technically looking at it, it does get like worse and worse. I just wonder if writing poetry follows the stages of grief, you know, like the whole like, anger depression um, um bargaining yeah, yeah. bargaining mm. um and then it leads up to acceptance or whatever yeah and i kind i try to do that like on purpose but i didn't want to be like too intentional about it because bargaining is like the third step and like towards the middle um when we get closer we get closer to like sun poison and like impatience and stuff but then i things start getting like worse but at the end i'm like you know what this is it um, I tried to follow that, but I wasn't like too linear just because I was still just like trying to follow on um, the poems or whatever. If you were to write these poems again five years from now, how different mm-hmm. they would be. Yeah. I'd... They would be like more <laughs> introspective on you as opposed to like observational with introspection in it. It's just <clears throat> like, I feel like people tend to come to poetry when they've had their heart broken. And I don't mean to be Mm -hmm. silly about it, but like... No, it's definitely true. But I wonder at what stage do most people start writing? Like, do they start... Like, what stage of grief do they start writing poems about that shit? Right, because I know some people that, like, are... Like, there is a friend of mine um he literally says the only time he can write is when he's sad and if he's not fucking depressed um he won't do it and I think like I used to be very much like that like all I did was write like sad or self-deprecating shit or just like romantic shit if I was feeling like really high on the muse but now it's like fuck I should probably tell these stories because I think at least because like from my perspective on like songwriting was like um actually came from my dad when I was a kid um he listens to all sorts of genres but like particularly he likes country music and his big thing was like the best songwriting is the ones that tell like the best stories because like you'll find people who can connect to those like same pathways even if it's maybe not like the same characters or setting just like the actual you know narrative structure like people have gone through heartache people have gone through grief and it's like about how you can connect to like the audience through those experiences that we can get united together with so now I'm kind of at a point where like I just want to write about everything and like anything so it's like kind of biographical and I'm just like it doesn't matter like how I feel about it I just know it's something that is important to me and I just want to like put it out there. And like for the biggest thing for me with this was closure. I think I just because I couldn't find closure with her the way I wanted to. I needed to find that closure for myself. And that's what I did with this, essentially. That's really interesting. Like when I read the poems I wrote about my breakup in the midst of the breakup some of them Mm. don't even make sense they're so angry and fucking like vicious that like if you were just to like pick one up and start reading it like it would be like what the fuck are you even talking about it's just like fragments of fucking rage going back to look back on that to try to because like here's the other thing that always trips me out ever since i heard it and it's gonna scar you just like it scarred me ready so you're fucked forever now Like, whenever you remember, allegedly, this is how neuro bullshit works. When you remember something that happened the first time, you're remembering what happened. The second time you remember what happened, you're remembering the memory you had that time it happened. The next time you think about it, it'll be the last memory you had remembering the initial event. So each time you go back and look at something, 
it's not going to be exact and it's going to get further and further from the reality that it was when it happened. That scares the shit out of me because it makes me feel like an unreliable narrator, just remembering my own life. Does that make sense? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, sure. I don't maybe remember, like, I'm just going to use dance, lesson, learn, like as an example. Um, I mean, if you want, should I just like read it really quick? Yeah. Just, you know what I'm like referencing? Yeah. Just like, just for the subject of it, like, like, sure. I don't like, it's, it's funny, like, cause I have a picture of her on this day and like everything I'm describing it. Like I remember it. I mean, sure. Maybe I don't remember like the exchange of words we had before or after, but like, I feel like as long as you remember the main sequence of events, like you're not being, you're not leading it to be like mistruthful. You know what I mean? But, like, but is the hit harder each time you remember it? Is the look on everyone's face more crazy every time you remember it? Is the look of shock on her face like more disgust every time you think back to it? You know what I'm saying? Like how many mm -hmm. little things change? And so I yeah. always have to do it right now. I have to write this right now to capture exactly what it was. And then it's like, well, how important is that? Probably not that much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you mean. Because you want to keep it like as authentic as possible. I guess like, I don't take that into account mainly because I just got back into poetry. Like I spent so many years like in bands. I wasn't like writing poems like at all. So like, um, and I I don't really journal. I probably should. That would probably help. Journaling um, poets who are afraid of themselves. No, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> Actually, give me you might get some good lines in there though. Dance, listen, learned. Gay pride, downtown Frederick, pink shorts. Barbecue parfaits. You floated from the Ataiza lamb, filled with smiles, surrounded by rainbows. Giggled with your childhood friend. We strolled, chatted with vendors, sipped my beer. I swear the music forced me, grabbed your hand like the DJ had the gun to my head, spun you around under the Carroll Creek Bridge. People gasped, you stunned my sight. In that short moment, I waited in the clouds that ambushed the shine of you until you struck me, knocked me back down to reality with a swift slap in the face. Silly smitten masochist stood frozen with a smirk as I caressed my tingling cheek, leaving me in the crowd, stuck in a new trance from the pendulum sway of your hips. But um, I remember that entire sequence of events. I mean, Maybe there are things I, I don't remember in between all of that, but that's pretty much what fucking happened. I don't know. <laughs> it always is. That's, that's what happened. She has a lot to answer for, is what you're saying. Oh, I mean, maybe. Maybe I do, too. Maybe that was a part of it. I think towards, like, the end, a lot of it I'm, like, was pissed off about. But it's just kind of, like, it is what it is, you know? So do you feel or like just like her actions and her friendship, I guess. Do you feel like you got closure on both the relationship and the friendship or just one or the other? Honestly, definitely both. And I say that because um, she tried texting me back in like October and I had already written like all of these. I just hadn't done like, you know, the final edit that I wanted to or whatever. And um she was like and she just hit me up out of nowhere to ask me about like um fucking iphones i get like what do you have not any other friends with an like no other friend with an iphone like I, why would you randomly text me all of a sudden ask me this question about like do you use carplay or do you just still use your regular bluetooth like i i never answered the text i just like let it sit there yeah. and i just didn't care also, like, you know, I'm, I'm with someone and I'm like extremely happy. And this is like the first person I've been with where I didn't think what if about her. And that's how I know I moved on. Because even when I was in like the, the other two relationships in between me and her breaking up, like I still was writing about her all the time. Um, but I just haven't needed to. I haven't cared to. That's awesome. That gives us yeah. hope. All of us heartbroken losers. 
it will get better. Shaylin says yeah. so. <laughs> Sorry. Shaylin says so. Yeah. No, it, it, it's it's truly possible. It will happen. You just, in part with that, you need to be completely honest on the page with not only um, maybe the whatever the person did wrong, but you also have to count, like take account for yourself and you need to call out your own bullshit. And until like you're ready to call out your own bullshit in the process and like look at it from a bird's eye perspective and take out like the me versus her, just two people in this whole fucking thing, like you'll get past it. I can't give you an ETA, but so do you think you um, that you were completely able to like see your faults on everything on this? Yeah. Well, yeah, shit. I don't know. Y'all can do it. <laughs> this went a completely different way than I thought it was gonna go. I'm here for it. That's probably the your your favorite part about doing all these things is like you you have like a set of like things you have in mind to like say, but like you have no idea how like the butterfly or, like a fleck is gonna like mm. ripple out or whatever. For real. What is your opinion on lyric books, actually? I because I've said like I could put out like fucking two full length books at least right now, if not more. No, I have a ton. From just my solo shit, from Creeperson shit, from Murder Cult. That you, like, published? No, or... I'm thinking I could. I just yeah. don't know, like, what kind of market there would be for that. Right. If you're not, like, Jim Morrison or something, you know. I'm basically looking at it as, if I ever run out of poems, I could do that. So, that's kind of the plan right now. That's a good plan. I'll take your plan. I'll do that too. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I have so much shit. It's ridiculous. And at the same time too, like sometimes I write some like really, like my lyrics, I feel like sometimes they can be complex, but then more times than not, I feel like there's a lot of very blunt hooks because like I love singing more like R&B, like soul when I do my cleans, but then I'll do screams and shit too. And like, I don't know, everything sounds good like everything will sound a lot better sung than read i think at least when it comes to my lyrics i'm like oh i don't know if i'd want to read this i think it's but if i heard it sang i'd get down <clears throat> i think it depends on the person's voice because i've heard a lot of people sing who probably shouldn't ever be near a microphone so oh, fuck well, i'll let you be the judge of that <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> well, into shitty karaoke you know how it fucking goes dude oh yeah true but you know what's so fucking stupid? I've literally played like so many live shows in like decent sized like venues, and uh, karaoke is so fucking intimidating to me. I don't know why. And I've even done like open mics like by myself, so it's nothing to do with being by myself. I just is it uh, doing other people's shit. I don't know. I think it's maybe because it's not my song. And it's like my rendition of sing song. But at the end of the day, like nobody gives a fuck. Cause it's like there's always gonna be somebody better, there's always gonna be somebody worse, and there's like zero expectations because karaoke is literally just supposed to be fun. But because I have to be Lil Miss Perfect or whatever, my version of perfect, whatever fucked up version that is, like I'm like, I gotta sound decent. But so half the time I'm too scared to do it. Yeah. Unless if I'm like drunk enough. I have Fergalicious stuck in my head now. I can't like unstuck that. Fergalicious. <laughs> London Bridge. There, I'll do that one. We'll do mashup. What do you think? Oh my god. Stop in my head. Make it go. That we fucking did. buy it. <laughs> um best CTA ever. Fucking oh buy my it. God. sales pitch right here. Yeah. You will purchase this. Look at my awesome nails. It matches the book. I know. It's like a good theme. I I'm going to do this again just like I did before. Because like you keep telling me that you're toying with a YouTube channel. Is this happening? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Look at you. You're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I have this like really cheesy idea. Or at least cheesy name. Fun idea. Super fun. Um, so I changed like my YouTube channel. Like it still has the name Shailen Marks. But the at or whatever is bookscapades because I don't know. I like puns and shit. And 
I love going to bookstores. I love the smell of old books. I love the premise of buying old books just from like an environmental perspective and like saving my fucking money perspective. And sometimes not if I find like a really good like early edition. Essentially, bookscapades. I want to go to bookstores and like film like myself like going not like myself on film. You'll probably see like my hands or something, I guess. But like um just like going to different bookstores and like specifically like i would really prefer local ones like if there's like a certain like infamous barnes and noble like the biggest barnes and noble or something like sure maybe i'll go to that but like essentially just doing that doing book hauls and doing book reviews um i think would be cool to like do and it it wouldn't just be fiction like it would be poetry and stuff too so i don't know and then like oh i think i didn't or maybe i did tell you but i didn't say it on the podcast so i guess might as well let it rip um Whenever I did the release party, um, I was just kind of, like, talking about how, like, I feel like everybody should write. And I was really, like, talking up, like, Anarchy Crew and just, like, doing that Chef of Gonna Night thing. And I just believe, I truly believe any everybody has a story. Everybody should put it out there, you know. And, um, uh, like, I had actually, like, literally, like, four different people come up to me. They're like, damn, like, you should go to the art school and, like, speak to the kids. I'm like... Yeah, I can make it like PG thirteen. <laughs> Are you gonna do that? Um, I want to maybe wait till I have like a bachelor's, just so I have like some sort of like to stand on when I try to pitch it to them. Um, just because like a lot of my stuff is like, while I did just take a children's class, like children's entertainment class for my degree, there's a lot of speculation on like what is and isn't appropriate for kids, and like kids can handle a lot more than you think, especially high school. I mean, shit, I was doing fucking drugs in high school, and, like. A lot of other shit I won't fucking say on this recording. <laughs> um, so it's like kids aren't fucking stupid, you know, but um, I do want to still be like appropriate or whatever. Um, I don't know, but a part of me like likes the idea of maybe getting people together locally and like doing a workshop, I think would be really cool. I toyed with like that thought just because I'm in school and like I've done like certain things just in like my working career where like I've been like a trainer almost like where I've been involved in training in like pretty much every job I've worked for ever just because like I don't know I'm I, I'm I like to think I'm good at breaking it down to people and like I like encouraging people and like you know I believe anyone can do anything if they put enough effort into it and they believe in themselves like as lame as that sounds it's honestly true um took me a long time to learn that one but uh for my own self but like i like that idea i just think i would probably do it like way later um and also just like i'm so busy with school and it's like each month like because i graduate pretty much halloween weekend and like it's like every month like the class is starting to get just like a little bit harder and it's just taking a little bit more of my time so i don't know if i'm gonna have the bandwidth for it and then my brother and my old roommate slash ex guitarist, um, my 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 buddy Brian, um, we might be fucking making music again. Oh, nice! And I'm like, yeah, yeah, because like I don't know, dude. Because Jeffrey's like, oh, I want to do like doom or thrash. Jeffrey's my brother. Jeffrey's like, oh, I want to do like doom or thrash, but like, I don't, you know, I, I don't really know like what I want to do. And I'm like, fuck, I have to play drums for that. And like, doom is cool. But, dude, playing Doom drums is the most boring thing. <clears throat> Wait, five more minutes. And then how <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like... Fuck. Uh, like, how hard can you hit that crash with that bass, dude? But let's make that fucking sing. Yeah, it's... I can see how that could get slow. I Yeah, and I, I mean, love it, I, but I wouldn't want to make a whole album of this shit. You know what I mean? So... And, like, the three of us all have, like, different influences. So, like, I think we're all just going to come together. We're just going to, like, hang out and drink and, like, talk or something. And then we're just going to jam with, like, no expectations. So, I think Jeffrey's bass. I'll probably be drums and switching over with keyboard. And then Brian will, like, do guitar. And I think from what Brian's saying, he wants to, like, split vocals, like, with me. So, we'll see how that works or whatever. But... We're yeah. just like, let's just go in it with no expectation, no timeline, and just like, just make some shit just to have fun. That sounds good. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. But so, yeah, I guess that's the thing. Like, I don't know what kind of bandwidth I have. And it's funny because I went to Wonderbook and Video, which is like my favorite, like, local bookstore in Hagerstown. 
it's a used bookstore that's like right around the corner from my house and I took a bunch of clips for it and I got stuff I just need to like compile it together and then just sit in front of the camera like I want a fucking wonder book it's wonderful let me tell you about it boom 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 and then I have this other thing you want me to send the clip to you so you have that so you don't have to record it <laughs> maybe I but, went uh, to I went to... it's wonderful Dude. Wonderful. But um I went to this antique store the other weekend and uh one of the booths well there was this there was like cool old typewriters that I didn't have the cojones to purchase, but um they were doing like blind date with a book and like sure a lot of people do that, right? But these were so cute because look, they wrapped them. Oh, it's really cute. I'm like, damn, yes. They were like four bucks and it's probably somebody's used fucking book because it's, you know, an antique store and it's like one of the little things. But this one is romantic love. I just judged it by the paper. And then the other one, it's got like peacocks on it and shit. And I like the word cock, so I was already there. <laughs> but it is apparently a thriller. And that's all I know. And I'm thrilled, you know what I'm saying, to open oh. them. But I'm like, I should open them on camera and then have a video of it. Yes, you should do that if you're gonna do that book scapade. Yeah. So I just you, want it to be fun. You already have the channel name and the like at sign and everything already. Technically, it's it's like my it's the one that like subscribes to like you or whatever for Anarchy Crew. It's the same one. I just changed the at to book scapades, but it still just says Shaylin Marks is like the name. I didn't like change that or whatever. Okay. I guess I could put Buxcapades with Shaylin Marks, but I didn't like really think of it that deep yet. No, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure you had it in case like someone's like, oh, that's a good idea. Let me go grab that. Yeah, no, I got it. Yeah. It's on lock. Not on Instagram, but just on YouTube, yeah. So um then the final thing is where can people find you with all of your weird named social media things sweet yes so if you're watching this on youtube please subscribe to matt wall's hey. fucking channel and if you have the video oh look at that oh it's in it's in do you see it oh let's caress it yeah it's said. there yeah it's focused it's a qr code um shaylinmarks.com that has also all my social media as well when you were doing your ddr phase was that at home or at the arcade at the motherfucking arcade that shit was 50 cents dude absolutely oh yeah dude i was obsessed and then like eventually after a lot of begging and crying i finally got like um i think it was a playstation 2 i was like I think I had a PlayStation 1, but I never fucking played it. But, like, the only reason why I had a PS2 was to have DDR at home. Because oh <laughs> they realized in the long run, they're like, yeah, this is actually probably cheaper if we just do this. So I'm like, thank you. Until you have to deal with my friends coming over. Damn, that sucks. Yeah. But, yeah, I lived. I actually, I ended up buying a Wii so I could play it. <laughs> and I still have, like, the patent stuff. I don't play it right now, but a part of me wants oh. to. Did you have just dance or did you just do um DDR? No, fuck that. No, I like DDR because the complexity. I mean, granted, I get I get that just dance is probably maybe technically even harder because you have to do hand movements and stuff, but like nah, DDR is my shit because it's the eye foot coordination of it all. Yeah. It's know? like guitar hero for your feet. Yes, yes, exactly. And I lived. I was obsessed with it. Good job. What was your favorite song to dance to on Dance Dance Revolution? <laughs> um, oh, shit. I just fucked There you. was a couple. Okay. Because there, oh, there's a few. Okay. There's the challenge mode version of Afro Nova. It was like a really dope beat. Um, I liked 321 Stars. Um, the challenge version of Sexy Planet because that was like a remix, and then um, I think it was called Sugaru or Sugaro. I can't remember. That one was really fucking sick too because it had like a gallop you would do in it, and that was like really hard back in the day. 
Wow. If I have to answer the question, yeah. Can you do the gallop now? Fuck no, I'm out of shape, dude. I mean, granted, I did like do a 5K like a couple years ago, but that was also a couple years ago. It was like a year and change ago. Um, I'm gonna say no. I probably couldn't play heavy mode, but I can get away with standard mode. Like the last time I played it on Wii, like I couldn't play like at my peak in like middle school. Granted, I was like always on a bicycle and like 130 pounds. I'm like 200 pounds now, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I can hang, but not at the capacity. I was 20 so years ago. Why aren't you still doing DDR now? I don't know. Well, I stopped because, like, I fucking started doing drugs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> fucking God. You're like, wow, like, I think this I is so was... fun. I think you need to get back into it and start a TikTok that is just you doing that. <laughs> the fuck out? You're like, nope. You almost knocked that it through. So... I know. <laughs> Dude, that's oh man. I know that it's getting close to your bedtime. Everyone go buy pheromones out now. Well, thank you so much. Yes, this, this was fun. And whatever you just listened to was my talk with Shaylin. Again, I haven't edited the episode yet, so I have no idea how long or short that was. Um, that's not what she said. She should know. By this point, am I right? I hope you enjoyed it. And again, run over to shalemarks.com to pick it up because there are not many copies of that left. Just like there are not many copies left of One Man Massacre, my latest chat book. I only have one more of the uh, cardstock covers that are signed. Um, the other ones have paper covers and are just numbered, not signed. There were only 15 of these to begin with. So um get them while the getting is good and the best way to get those right now is to send me an email and tell me that you want it to i hate matt wall at gmail.com send me an email and tell me that you want it okay and and we'll see what kind of response you get jesus christ shout outs let's get into those shout outs i'm not i have to come up with something else besides saying backdoor plugs because i feel like that is the constant that keeps getting my podcast demonetized. Because I, I talk all sorts of shit all over the podcast episodes. All different kinds of stuff. But the one thing that I say pretty much all the time. The um, B-U-T-T-P-L-U to the G. With an S. Okay. So we're going to have to come up with like a new name for this. If you have any great ideas that aren't pornographic, leave them in the comments down below. But now let's get into shirts. Okay, so I want to give a big thank you to all those motherfuckers over there on Patreon. Michael Cedar, Harry, and Michael. Thank you. Oh, we have a Michael M and a Michael S. There you go. Over in the YouTube thank you crew, we have Patrick, Britt, Jan, Deb, Ethan, Julia, and Lauren. Thank you guys. In the Anarchy crew, I want to give a big thank you to Nate, to Mindy, to Shaylin, to Tamara, to Adam, to JH, and to Cedar. And at the chat book of the month club, the number one chappie over there, Caitlin, thank you so much. There are new people because I've lost a lot of members since I um, stopped doing the shit I was doing, which I fucking get. I understand. But let me just make sure because i do remember seeing some other signups here so i also want to give a big thank you to joseph estrada thank you so much um and then i also want to just give um a couple thank yous to those of you who have been there for me to talk to lately um it's greatly appreciated so um chase I want to give a thank you to you, and I probably should keep my mouth shut with the other thank yous. But for those of you who have been there for me recently, um, I do appreciate you, and thank you so much. Also, I'm going to be at the Bombay Beach Lit Fest. God damn it, I should know the date. I think it's March 23rd. Look it up. Like I'm sure you could like Google it, and it's probably up by now. Um, I know that it wasn't up last time I was doing stuff, and that's why I'm ill-prepared. But I will be there on the zine 
the, the history of the zine panel. And I will also have a table there selling a bunch of my shit. And I will be selling it at um, a slightly discounted price since there um, is just going to be me there. And there'll probably be some kind of deal or something like that. So if you are in that area, um, I would say like the Palm Springs area, um, make sure you come over and say hello to me. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.